What I'm saying to you, and this is what I'm saying to the governments I advise, if you stay on that second industrial revolution platform, centralized telecommunication, fossil fuel nuclear energy, and internal combustion transport on dumb road systems and rail, there's not a country in the world that's going to be able to move its economy because we've optimized the aggregate energy efficiency and the productivity of that system. We can't get anything more out of it. If we move to an Internet of Things platform and usher in a third industrial revolution, we can move from about 13 percent aggregate energy efficiency to 40 percent in the next 25 to 30 years. This is a big leap forward. How do we pay for this? It's about infrastructure. And in the meetings in Brussels, everyone's asking, how do we pay for this? In 2012, the EU spent $741 billion in that year alone on infrastructure, public and private. The problem's not the money, it's where it's going. They're spending it on the old second industrial revolution infrastructure that can't get us any more opportunities. If we simply reprioritize the existing investment, and put 25% in laying out this new digital Internet of Things platform across Europe and the partnership regions will be there in 25 years. We got to open the door and let them lay out this infrastructure and create the opportunities. How will this affect employment? Some of you remember I wrote a book called The End of Work in 1995. And at that point, I said that we are automating our production. It was very controversial. I remember the economist, some of you are here, wrote a cover story in the book saying, I don't think so. To your credit, you came back in 2011 and said, we re-looked at it, it was spot on. Anybody could have seen it, but we were so wedded to the idea that new technologies are disruptive, they destroy old jobs but create more jobs than they destroy. But what I said is we're automating manufacturing, white collar, conceptual, and knowledge work, and we will with our software, I said in 95, and with the new internet, we're going to automate conceptual and knowledge work. However, what I did not see in 1995 is the possibility of a third industrial revolution. This Internet of Things platform gives us 40-year breathing time as we automate, because we've got to build out the infrastructure. That's two generations. That's everyone back to work. It's labor intensive. We have to change the entire energy grid of the UK and every other country from fossil fuel and nuclear to renewables. It means we have to retrofit every single office, home, and factory. Then we have to install the technologies, solar and wind, very labor intensive. We have to take the entire electricity grid of the UK and transform it from servo mechanical and dumb to digital and smart. Who's going to lay down the underground cable? Not robots. And we're going to need companies from telecom, cable, ICT, and electronics all to be engaged in that rollout. We have to take the transformation grid of the UK and transform it from dumb to smart roads and from internal combustion to electric and fuel cell vehicles. Who's going to put in all the charging stations? Millions of them. So you can power in and take power from the grid or send your power back in your vehicle. So we have the opportunity, and it's only two generations, of one last surge of mass employment in every category. The, we will require millions and millions of workers. However, as we stage this in, this smart, Internet of Things platform is going to give us a very automated capitalist market at low marginal cost, very streamlined. It's going to run by analytics and algorithms and really small workforces.